Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. I have a question for you. Can you help me, please? Tell me. I have a question. Oh, Can yes. Me? Tell me, tell me. Can you listen to me? Can you hear me? Yes, a little bit, but I, I hear you. Tell me. I don't know. Okay, let me, let me, let me fix my, my audio. Okay, good. I have uh, reviewed my, my, uh, my chat. Candy, if I have a question with uh, how 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 to work some um homework and um, homework, let me uh, I have um, I don't know how uh, in in the profe no no sé cómo contestar una pregunta me gustaría que me la me ayudara en la en la plataforma you have problems with the platform. Yeah. Okay. In that case, you are going to tell me in which uh, activities. Me dice el número de la actividad en la que tenemos la duda y la vamos a poner en la pantalla para resolverlas ahorita. Okay, perfecto. Bien. Sería una de las cuatro primeras de la primera sección es la número tres. El número tres. La respuesta larga. Okay. So. Give me a second. I'm going to go to the platform. Vamos a cargar la plataforma primero. Okay, no okay, okay. Bye. Give me a second. Give me a second. Okay, it's charging. Section one or section two? Section one. Okay, section one. I'm going to put the, the screen right now to see the, the exercises right now. Okay, we are here. We have knowledge, uh, knowledge check, 1.4, waypoint 7, no, no. Point, 1.11, and 1.14. No, 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 the next one. The next one. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, the next one. Wait, I'm going to use um my headphones. So give me a moment. Give me a moment. No, no, no. Okay, which is the number? One, one point twelve. One point twelve, okay. This one. Let me see. Okay, in this section. That, that's correct. Okay. I don't mm. know how many how, how that. Okay. That's okay. Okay, in this question or in this uh, section, you are going to answer these uh, questions like thinking about yourself. But we have two options. We have the affirmative or the negative answer. Ahora, la cuestión es que tenemos que eh, fijarnos también en lo del punto. Ahora, en este caso, dice que are you from the United States? My answer was, no, I am not from um... Okay, so, entonces vamos a escribir, no, I am not, like this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Vamos, vamos a tratar de ponerlo así, mm -hmm. vamos a tratar de ponerlo así. 
Is your teacher from Canada? No, it's not. No, it's not. And the last one, are you and your best friend the same age? Yes, we are. Okay. We are. And in this case, it's affirmative. Yes, we are. Now we are going to see if they are like correct or not. Aquí está la cuestión. Vamos a poner respuestas cortas. ¿Ya? No es necesario que le agreguemos toda la otra información. Solo las respuestas cortas. Oh, that's okay. Thank you. That, you're that's welcome. Yeah. Okay, you're welcome. You. Okay. If you have another uh, activity in which you have trouble, you can tell me and we can answer that information right now. It's okay, teacher. Okay. Okay, so in this case, um, we are going to continue. This is the last session of this week. Uh, we have completed one week already. Uh, the time is going really fast. We have four days today. And we are going to complete the information that we have on the section one and section two of the platform. And we are going to uh, continue with the other sections um, the next week and the other weeks. But it is interesting that we are completing the first week uh, in this moment. But in this case, we are going to talk about a topic that I know that it's kind of easy uh, because it's a very uh, basic topic. We see this kind of information when we are um, learning English for the first time. But in this case, we are going to do it like um, a little bit different uh, because we are going to have like a practice. Vamos a hacerlo un poco más práctico. No vamos a tanto a, um, how can I say? No, no vamos a entrar tanto solo a lo que es la información eh, detallada, sino que lo vamos a hacer también como, um, como una práctica. It's going to be like a practice. But for this, I'm going to send something. But give me a second. Because I have an um something that you need to read. We are going to do a reading practice right now. And this one is going to be like the first thing that we are going to do to talk about this topic. But give me a second. I need to put the information on the document. Puedo saber cómo pone el apóstrofe del R, del R en la forma contractada en la, en la matriz. ¿La forma contractada de? De cualquier, de, de, por ejemplo, dicen eh, abre el, eh, la, 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 la comida ahí. Va, ah, eh, en, ahí, en, ahí, en la plataforma. Sí. Um, oh, en, ¿Qué uh -huh. tecla ocupa? En mi caso, yo utilizo este la cuestión es que como el 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 uh, 
el teclado que yo tengo directamente me tira la, la comida de esa forma. Entonces, eh, porque it is supposed that it has like the keyboard in 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 English, not in Spanish, and that's why I have the 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 thing in 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 my uh keyboard. But um, if you want, I'm going to write a word on the chat, and you can uh like copy that part. Because uh, in some cases, when we have this kind of troubles with the words, I'm helping you with this uh, information. So in this case, let me see if I can send to you some examples just to copy the word and you are going to take the symbol. But give me a second. Okay. But just give me a second because I'm I'm doing something else. I'm going to send the um, the example in a couple of seconds. But give me a moment. Okay. Okay, you have access to the document, so you are going to find this example first. But we are going to read a short article, in this case it's a short article, in which I need you to focus on the words that we have there. You have a very specific words, and I have um, a couple of questions for you. So I'm going to show you what is this information about, and then we are going to like have a short conversation related to this um, information that we have on the, uh, the article. So I'm going to uh, put the information there. It's an image, but in this case, it's a paragraph that is related to a uh, very specific information. And then we are going to discuss something related to this article or to this information. But it is not just like uh, based on what it is saying in the article, but also the structure that we are using on that article. Vamos a leer un pequeño artículo, pero no simplemente se refiere a la información que trae el artículo, sino también a la estructura que están utilizando para esos artículos. O cómo está escrita esta información. So we need to pay attention to the structure and the form in which we are writing this information here. So you can access to the document and you can read the article or you can read it uh, in this moment when I am showing you this information on the screen. So it is like valid to check this one. Because you have the information on the document already. Mm -hmm. And I have the document here. I'm going to share this article right now. And also, I write the example here. You have the, the example on the chat also. And we have this article. So in this case, we are going to read this information. You are going to see that it's kind of long. But at the same time, it's not complicated to understand what is the structure that we are using in this um, information. So in this case, um, I'm going to give you like a couple of minutes to read this article. 
And of course, we are talking about things that we can find on the internet. I'm going to give you time to read this information and then I'm going to make you some questions related to the article, but also related to the structure that we are using in this specific information. Tenemos dos cosas por ahí. Vamos a hablar de la estructura del documento, en este caso del artículo, y también vamos a hablar de la información que está incluida en el artículo. So, in this case, remember that we are talking about um, things that we do in on in the internet or something like that. So, pay attention to the words that are marked there, and then we are going to talk about a little bit about this one. Vamos a hablar un poco sobre la estructura y también sobre las palabras que están remarcadas. You are going to tell me what, or in this case, what part of the speech are those words? ¿Qué parte del discurso o qué papel juegan esas palabras marcadas? en este proceso de aprendizaje del inglés. So, we are going to read and then we are going to answer some questions. Okay, in this um article, we are talking about um not just the time that we are spending on the internet, but also we are talking about um the things that are good or bad about this situation. You know that we had um changing in the way we uh, do our things, and I'm talking about the way in which um. We can make meetings or to have classes 
or to talk with a, a, our family or our friends around the world. And in this case is to uh, have this kind of communication that we are having right now. You know that we are in different places uh, around the, the, the country, but we are connected in one space. We are seeing each other uh, through the screen and we are like uh, spending a couple of minutes together. And that's why we have this kind of articles in which we are like understanding uh, the impact that the internet has in our life in the past years. Uh, you know that it's very important or this is like something that changed our uh, mind because we are finding a lot of things on the internet. We can sell, we can buy, we can hear, we can read, we can a lot of things through our screen. But we are talking about the cell phones. But also, um, it was not like the whole communication process through the cell phone. But after the situation that we had a couple of years ago, we change our lives and we are now uh, focusing on working in these kind of activities like this through the computer, through the cell phone, on the internet. And this article is about the things. Tenemos este pequeño artículo donde habla de las consecuencias tanto positivas como negativas de que nosotros estemos muy involucrados con esto del internet and we can find different things here. And we begin saying, in today's busy world, estamos hablando de un mundo bastante eh, complicado porque estamos hablando de que es, um, está muy, muy saturado de cosas, ¿verdad? Estamos muy ocupados. People spend a lot of time with computers and they spend less and less time with people. But if you can see, this situation is not like we decide to have this kind of a uh, situation. In my case, I change a lot about the work in my computer because I have this kind of things. I am like a person that like to read in, in paper. I, I really love reading my books in paper. But also, I know that I have to use my computer to work. Um, in the couple of, of years ago, um, I didn't think about to give a class through my computer. But then we have a emergency in which we need to change a lot of things. And now I spend a lot of time on my computer. And in that case, I have a big problem with my eyes. Because I use uh, glasses and right now I am not using it because I don't know where they are. But um, I use glasses. But after working a lot of hours on my computer, I have another problem. And I need to change my glasses like two times, I guess. Because I was like very tired of being on the computer. So... Does this change how people interact with family and friends? Does it help or hurt people in relationship? Tenemos dos preguntas bastante importantes. Does this change how people interact with family and friends? ¿Esto ha cambiado la forma en la que interactuamos con nuestra familia y amigos? Does it help or hurt people in a relationship? ¿Ha herido, verdad, a las personas o ha cambiado las relaciones que tenemos con las personas. And it says that sociologists disagree about this. Some worry about the internet effect on our friends and family. Others think this is not a problem. Tenemos como la balanza. Unos piensan que sí es un problema y otros piensan que no, que en lugar de ser un problema puede ser una solución bastante viable. Studies show that people spend less face-to-face -face time with family and friends than they did a few years ago. Instead, they play online games, shop online, and also look at social networking sites. 
ya decíamos, hemos cambiado tanto que ahora nuestras compras las podemos hacer a través del internet, incluso podemos vender cosas en internet, podemos jugar nuestros videojuegos en línea y no necesitamos movernos de nuestro lugar. Aquí no agregamos esto de las clases, de las reuniones, but we have that tool. In the United States, the average person spends 24 hours a week online, 24 horas en línea a la semana. They interact face to face less. Uh, I mean, face to face less, and this sometimes has bad effects. For example, some people do not spend time together as a family very often. They talk less because they spend more time online. Sometimes technology helps people improve their inter their relationship with others. For example, social networking sites help people stay in touch with friends and family who live far away. They enable people to reconnect with old friends and classmates. Okay, and the last part, are you worried about the time you spend online? Estamos preocupados de el tiempo que nosotros pasamos en línea. If so, try to make a schedule. A schedule time away from the computer to be with family and friends. Try to balance online time with face-to-face -face time. Remember that I was saying that we are going to do a schedule and we are going to see what is like the effect of these schedules in our lives. Vamos a tratar de trabajar también en un horario o cómo nosotros explicamos las actividades que hacemos día a día. And this article is about that activity too, because we are talking about schedules. We need to have our time on the computer, but also we need to have time to talk with our family. It's very important that we have this kind of time in which we can talk with people face to face. Now, We have read this article. Ya leímos este artículo, ya sabemos de qué trata, ya más o menos vamos entendiendo un poco por ahí qué es lo que está pasando con este artículo. Now, I have some questions. If you have the answer, you can answer, don't worry. You can do it on the chat or you can do it just um, turning your microphone on. We have one question. The first one is, What do sociologists disagree about? ¿En qué están en desacuerdo los, los sociólogos en este artículo? If you have the answer, you can give me the answer. Teacher. Repeat, please. What do sociologists disagree about? De cómo los efectos del del internet en la en en el tiempo con la familia y con los amigos, mm -hmm. como el tiempo que invierte uno en en ese en internet más que todo con con ellos, como a veces es preocupante de del tiempo que uno invierte o que uno gasta mm -hmm. frente a, al computador. Oh, very good. We have an idea here. Another one, someone else that give another um, idea. We have one point here. Something else. Okay, in this case, um, he has the point, but he's uh, talking about the relationship with our families. So in this case, the sociology disagree about the situation in which we are saying uh, this use of the internet can hurt our relationship. Los sociólogos no están como de acuerdo en esto de, de las relaciones que pueden herir o eh, hacer menos, ¿verdad? Las relaciones que tenemos con las personas solo por usar el internet. Next one. This is very easy. Eso está bastante fácil. 
how much time does the average person in the United States spend online per week? How much time? 24 hours. 24 hours. 24 hours. Ah, okay, very good. 24 hours per week. Mm. Okay, now, this one you can explain with your own words. Esta la pueden explicar ustedes de la manera que ustedes lo eh, comprenden. What is face-to-face -face time? Repeat, please, teacher. What is face-to-face -face time? I think, uh, uh, can you, uh, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, teacher, can you hear me? Uh, teacher, I, I think is when the people are in the same place. Yo pienso que es poco el tiempo que se pasa de estar hablando así de frente, sino más que todo en redes, teacher. Maybe I have problems, I don't know. Okay, question, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, okay I was thinking that uh, I have problems with my audio. Well, in this case, uh, we're talking about the face-to-face -face, um, relationship or activities or something like that, or what is a face-to-face -face time this one is related to the conversations that we have with people, but uh, people that is in the same place. Uh, for example, with friends, with uh, co-workers or something like that. El es el tiempo que tenemos con una persona, ¿verdad? De vernos cara a cara en el mismo lugar. And... Now... In this case, what are these words? ¿Qué son esas palabras que están marcadas en el artículo? What do you think they are? They are. That is the question. They are. Verb. That's verb. Ah, verb. Okay, good. They are verbs. Son verbos. But in verb. which time? Past. 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 All of them are in past? Present. Mm-hmm. They are, person. they are in present. Okay, we have these verbs. We have spend, does, change, help, hurt, disagree, worry, think, show, shop, look, play, interact, um, helps, and are. These ones are verbs in present. So, in this case, remember that we have an article that is talking about the internet, but also we have an structure, a very specific structure. 
And in this case, the structure that we are having here is the simple present. Estamos hablando del presente simple, de cómo vamos a aplicar la información que nosotros tenemos sobre esta estructura a un artículo como este. This is a very great article because it is talking about the maybe uh, positive and negative um, things about the use of the internet in our life, but also it is explaining us how to create this kind of information just using verbs in present. Entonces, basados en eso, vamos a hablar del simple present. Vamos a hablar del presente simple. We are going to make a review of the information that we have uh, related to the simple present. We are going to remember the information and we are going to see um, how can we apply this information to our daily life? ¿Cómo podemos aplicar esta información en nuestra vida diaria? So, we are going to move this one a little bit for the next page. Because I need a space here. Okay. So, the topic that we are going to develop is simple present. So in this case, we're going to have like very basic things, but we're going to like use it to remember uh, the uses of the, the simple present. And we are going to see structures and all of the things. So the first thing is the, the simple present describe habits, general truths, feelings, and thoughts. Así que vamos a utilizarlo para hábitos, verdades generales, sentimientos, y pensamientos. And we are going to um, have some examples here. Okay, in this case, we are going to see. We have many people spend up to 24 hours a week online. Many people. Okay, here we have the verb, this one. I play games online every night. And we have the verb here, play. Next one, my sister loves to shop online. My sister loves to shop online. And we have the verb here. So if you can see this, um, Examples, they are like, two of them are very easy. They are very basic uh, uh, structures. And the other one is kind of long. But the thing is that we are using these verbs in present form. So in that case, is that we are talking about this precise moment in the time in which we are. Now, 
how to create affirmative and negative statements. And also we're going to see the structure of the affirmative and negative statements with B. We are going to see the contractions. Just no uh, questions and short answers. And we are going to use also information questions and WH word questions and statements. Vamos a, a enfocarnos más que todo en estructuras. Vamos a ver las estructuras de una sola vez y luego ya vemos los um, ejemplos. So, in this case, we're going to have here structures. And we have affirmative and negative statements. We are going to begin with the affirmative. In this case, remember, this is just um review. Solo estamos recordando información. Esto ya lo sabemos, ya lo hemos Eh, leído, ya lo hemos practicado. But in this case, we need to, to remember this information because it's very important that we can remember how to create this kind of statements and which um, elements we need to, to use to create these sentences. So in this case, we have the subject plus the verb plus the complement. These ones are the very short uh, sentences. We have the examples. I shop online. Next one, with the same verb, you shop online. They shop online. And we have something different. He, she, and it. We have the verb shops online. Okay, this part is also related to the rule of the third person. And we are talking about the use of the letter S at the end of the verb. And this is applied just when we have the pronouns he, she, it that function as the, um, the third person in plural. Recuerden que agregamos la S cuando tenemos la tercera persona del, eh, I mean, plural, del singular. Tenemos la persona del singular que ellos pues tienen su regla especial in which we are the word S at the end of the verb. So I found my, my glasses off. Now I am complete. And that's why we just add the S at the end. Tercera persona singular, se le agrega la S cuando son estructuras simples como esta. En el caso de tener auxiliares, pues obviamente ya no le vamos a agregar la S porque el auxiliar va a estar cumpliendo esa función. The auxiliary is the one that is going to like uh, complete the rule of the third person, but in this case it's the verb because we don't have any auxiliary that make us understand what is the use of this um, structure. Now, for the negative, we have the, the same, almost the same uh, structure. But in this case, we can have two negative words. Podemos tener dos eh, formas de hacer los negativos. And in this case, we are just going to use the word not, or we can use the structure do not. We have the subject plus not or 
do not, does not. Plus the base form of the verb. And we have the examples. No? Okay, I'm going to stop this one. Vamos a ver, voy a detenerlo un momento y lo voy a volver a compartir porque se supone que estaba en la pantalla. Okay, let's see again. Okay, now you can see the document. Yes. Yes, teacher. Ah, okay. Yes, teacher. Es que sí lo vemos, pero eh, quizás está muy ampliado. Oh, really? En mi caso, yo lo veo perfectamente así como está. Okay, we are going to see if it's working. Can you see it clearly uh, now? Or you have also the same problem, uh, <laughs> Susana? It is a clear. Okay, okay thank you. Clear. Clear. Okay, okay. So I was saying, we have two forms to create the negative. One is just adding the word not, and the second one is um, using the auxiliary. In this case, we have the use of the auxiliary. So in this case, we can um, like make this rule. Tenemos la regla, ¿verdad? Del auxiliar o de la tercera persona. Y aquí ya recae en el auxiliar si la utilizamos en este sentido. We're going to see the examples. Again, with the same verb. Vamos a utilizar el mismo verbo, el shop i i not ah uh, in this case we can use both i am not or i don't eh, podemos utilizar los dos porque estamos hablando de los dos en este caso digamos i am not or i not shop online O mm. le vamos a poner por acá. I do not shop online. Ok, y ahí estamos utilizando nuestro auxiliar. Mm. Uh, al, al inicio, donde pone I not shop online, o tiene que ir el I. O solo I case... not. In this case, um, lo pongo como ejemplo porque aquí ya tendríamos que cambiarle algo más. Si yo pongo I am not, mm -hmm. aquí, I am not shop, it's going to be kind of weird. Tendríamos que decir I am not shopping. Tendría que cambiarle mm -hmm. por acá, ¿verdad? I am not shopping online. No estoy comprando en línea. Mm -hmm. But in this case, we are not using the ID. ¿Mm? Como si yo, fuera así, si fuera no, continuo. Exactamente, sería ya continuo. So, that's why we have the space between the pronoun and the negative word. Entonces, ahí tendríamos que basarnos más que todo en the use of the auxiliary. Aquí sí ya nos metemos en el auxiliar because we are not going to change the verb. Aquí ya no cambiamos el verbo porque si no ya no sería simple. Now, okay. Uh -huh. You don't, aquí ya nos metemos al negativo con ya con la contracción. You don't shop online. They do not shop online. Y luego nos vamos a la regla de la tercera persona. He, she, it. Y aquí agregamos does not y como nuestro auxiliar ya tiene, ya está cumpliendo la función de la regla de la tercera persona acá. Let me mark this one. Because I need this. 
this and this. Here, I'm not going to change my verb. Shop online. So, in this case, he does not shop online. Él no compra en línea. Y como mi auxiliar ya lleva la S o la ES en este caso, mi verbo ya no necesita cambiar. No es necesario que ya lo cambiemos porque no vamos a ponerle it doesn't shops online because it is not possible. Or in this case, we can do it like a contraction. She doesn't shop online like this. Now, we're going to see the other part of the examples, but in this case, is affirmative and negative statements with be. Aquí sí vamos a utilizar el verbo to be, pero ya no lo vamos a utilizar como lo estábamos explicando aquí. Because in this case, it's not going to be possible to be a simple present. It's going to be another structure. But we can use the verb to be to make negative statements. But we are going to see what is the structure. For the affirmative, Okay, we have the affirmative and we have the structure. Again, the subject plus the verb be plus a complement. And we have the following thing. I am online. Estoy en línea. Next one, you are online. They are online. And of course, we have he is online. Or she is online. Remember that in this case, our main verb is the verb to be. So in this case, we're not going to use another verb or we're not going to use or to add another verb because in this case, our main verb is the verb to be. Now for the negative, we have the following structure, the subject plus be plus not plus the complement. And we have, I am not online. You are not online. They are not online. And he is not or isn't. Online. So in this case, you can see that we have very, very um, simple, very easy statements uh, in which we can like uh, have this information. But you know that um, when we are at the beginning of the course or maybe we are in basic or the first um, time that we are learning English, we have these kind of sentences that are kind of easy to understand. And because we are following a structure and we are just adding the elements that we need to do, but now we are in a um, higher level and we need something more. Esto lo tenemos que ver cuando estamos iniciando, ¿verdad? Cuando estamos comenzando con nuestro proceso. Pero ahora que nosotros estamos como en un nivel un poco más alto, ya lo vemos como muy sencillo. Ah, this is very easy. I understand everything. But you know that is part of the process that we need to see these elements again. So that's why we are seeing this information. I think that I am going to add to the document 
the uh, information of the contractions and the question, the information of the questions, because um, it's just like a review. And also we are going to use or to have an information related to the use of simple present statements. Mm, and what else? And the use of simple present question. Vamos a um, agregar en el documento. But give me a second. I'm going to step this one. I'm going to add to the document the information. La otra información la vamos a agregar en el documento para que ustedes eh, la tengan ahí. Just like examples, just like uh, information or extra information related to the use of a, of the simple present. Because we are not going to have enough time to see the last part. Because I need you to read this one because it is related to the schedules. And I try to talk about the schedules um, from the previous class. Um, así que la otra información relacionada a las contracciones, preguntas y eh, oraciones simples la vamos a dejar solo como información. In this case, we are going to see the last part that is the daily schedule that is an audio. Let me see if I can chart this thing. So in this case, we're just going to listen the information because we have just like two minutes. Vamos a escuchar la información de las, um, de las rutinas that we have on the platform. And I'm going to tell something about the, the schedules. But in this case, we are just going to listen it. Listen to Rodney, Tina, and Ellen talk about their daily schedules. Complete the chart. What do you do, Rodney? I'm a chef. Hey, that's great. So, what are your work hours like? They're okay. I work in the afternoons and evenings. I get up around 9 a.m., and I work from 11 a.m. until 10 p.m. I get home fairly late, about 11 p.m., and I'm usually in bed by 1 in the morning. And what do you do, Tina? Well, I'm an office manager. It's a regular 9 to 5 office job, so I get up at 7 a.m. and get home around 6 p.m. That's okay, though, because I like to go out at night. I go to bed around midnight on weekdays. What about you, Ellen? Well, my job is a bit different. I'm a flight attendant. I start work at 6 in the morning, so I have to get up before 5 a.m. Wow, that's too early for me. Then I often have long flights, so I don't get home until 9 o'clock at night. But I always go to bed right away, around 10. Okay, if you can uh, notice the information that they are using on this audio program is like they are talking about the things they uh, do during the day. And in this case, when we are talking about schedules, we are not talking about just like a checklist or a to-do list. It's to explain what are the activities that we um, do dur during the day. And like in a very, um, like we can say, um, natural form in which I am just explaining to you what I am doing in my day. But I'm going to add some examples of list. We're going to make like a difference. I'm going to show you or I'm going to add some examples of schedules, um, checklist and add to the list to see the difference between these uh, things that we uh, do to complete activities during the day. Les voy a agregar ejemplos de eh, los horarios, así como lo explican acá en el audio, un, una lista, ¿verdad?, donde vamos chequeando nuestras actividades y también una to-do list, que son un poco más cortas, ¿verdad?, y, y más sencillas de seguir, pero bastante detalladas, to see the difference between these tools. Now, it's time to end this session. Um, remember that we are going to have sessions on Monday. 
we are going to come back to the sessions the next Monday to uh, complete the second week. So have a really good night, have a really good weekend, and see each other on Monday. Yeah. Have a good night, teacher. Good night. I have, I have a question. Tell me, tell me. How many, how many sections can um, complete at this lesson? Um, in this case, we have two. For this week, section one and section two. Okay, thank you. Thank You're welcome. Okay, good one. Bye-bye. Good night, bye-bye. Bye. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye.